the 1986 NFL season. And in Washington, they are gearing up for their second half playoff drive. It's a road the Redskins have traveled often, winning two of the last three NFC East titles. Entering today's action, a three-way stadium in Washington as the Minnesota Vikings take on the Washington Redskins. In the NFC East, historically the last five years, this race has gone down to the wire. And at the halfway mark, it's a tight race again. Now in the fourth quarter, the Eagles are beating the Cardinals in a close game. And in the big one today at Giants Stadium, the Giants lead the Dallas Cowboys 17 to 14. And once again, here are the standings, a three-way tie going in, and of course the Redskins playing a big role as well. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, along with Dan Deerdorf. And Dan, uh, I know that the coaches are taking a look at the big picture coming into this game. Well, both the Vikings and the Washington Redskins are looking at this game, figuring that it'll somehow have something to do with who gets into playoffs and who stays at home. And I think we're really dealing with a wild card picture. If you're the Minnesota Vikings, with a win today, you come out of this game with a tied record with the skins, but knowing that if you end up tied at the end of the season, you go to the playoffs and the Skins stay home. Conversely, if the Skins can win today, they open up a two-game lead over Minnesota. And of course, the Vikings already beat the 49ers in case those two teams end in a tie as well. Absolutely right, and they are capable, as we all know, because of their record. Now, the Redskins have an added man today on offense, and a good weapon, Kelvin Bryant, after six weeks, is going to be activated. What kind of a dimension will he give Washington? Well, he'll give them the extra dimension they've been missing. Kelvin's been out the last six weeks, and some criticism of the Redskin offense are too predictable and it's nothing but George Rogers. Well, they've been missing that Joe Washington type back. His name is Kelvin Bryant, and he'll be here for their second half push, and he's the guy on second and long, on third and long that comes into the ball game. He's a big play guy. They're really looking for nice things from Kelvin Bryant from here on out. All right, Dan, and we have threatening clouds, and there is a chance of rain here. It is 67 degrees as we get underway here at RFK Stadium with the lights on late in the afternoon. The Minnesota Vikings have won the toss, and Steve Cox will be kicking off for the Redskins. And Rufus Best is deep for the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings 5-3, and three, the Redskins 6-2, and two, and we're underway. And Best is going to let it go out of bounds at the 2, and so Cox will have to kick it again from the 30-yard line. The Washington Redskins are a perfect 8-0 following Monday night game since Joe Gibbs became head coach. Most teams have trouble following those Monday games, Dan. Yeah, but not the Skins, and for some reason, they just seem to do so doggone well. Of course, they've been lucky that some of them, and a lot of them really, have been here at home after having to travel on Monday night. One thing that's going to be interesting in today's ball game, because we had some rain in the Washington area here this morning, and a light drizzle now, this is a soft field. And the Minnesota Vikings, who play most of their games on artificial turf, it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with a soft, slow field here today. They are 2-0 on grass, but not 2-0 playing the Washington Redskins grass. A lot of people who win on grass have a tough time at RFK. And it's not so much because of the field. So Best is back again, and now Cox will kick from the 30. That's third in the NFC in kickoff returns, and it'll be interesting to see the way the Vikings respond from last week's disappointing loss because of their punting problems against the Browns. Their yeah, punting problems, that, that, that may be the understatement of the day. They had a punt block. Uh, Greg Coleman wasn't able to go because of a pulled groin. And uh, interestingly enough, Jerry Burns has taken some criticism in Minnesota that he wasn't ready to deal with that problem. And he's got two punters on him today. Yeah. This is a short kick by Cox, and it is taken by Best. And Best thought that Ted Brown was going to take it. They had a mix-up, and Brown was tackled at the 11-12 yard line. Making the play for the Redskins is Clarence Verdain. I don't know what it is about RFK, but we've seen a lot of teams make mistakes like this early on. Both Bess and Brown just look at the football, and of course, that's a free ball. Somebody better get it, and Teddy Brown finally picks it up. But the Vikings, as a result of that mistake, have to start this game off with poor field position. Tommy Kramer, the quarterback, second-rated passer in the NFC. First and 10 on the 13-yard line. Darren Nelson and Alfred Anderson. Anderson in motion. Darren Nelson on the first carry. Is stopped by Neil Oltowitz, the middle linebacker. Charles Mann, Dave Buss, Daryl Grant, who is starting his first game of this year, and Dexter Manley up front for the Redskins. Calvin Daniels, Oltowitz, who made the stop, and Rich Mallott are the linebackers. 
Daryl Green and Vernon Dean are the cornerbacks. Ken Coffey and Curtis Jordan, the safety. Loss of two on the play. It'll be second and 12. Ed Brown, who can catch coming out of the backfield, replaces Anderson. And he goes in motion. But they flip it to Nelson, who bobbled it. And already it's third down and long, and Kramer and the Vikings are in a hole. The rest of the offense for the Minnesota Vikings, they started Anderson and Nelson. Anthony Carter and Leo Lewis are the wide receivers. Gary Zimmerman, Jim Huff, Dennis Swilling, Terry Tausch, and Jim Tim Irwin are the offensive linemen, and Steve Jordan, their leading receiver at tight end. Third down and 12, Todd Bowles comes in, and the nickel defense, and Barry Wilburn as the sixth defensive back. So does Steve Hamilton, a pass rush. Kramer to go to Darren Nelson, incomplete. And it was Darrell Green who got a hand on it and batted it away. Tommy Kramer that time came out of it as best as he possibly could. That could have been picked off for some reason. Rather than going to Carter across the middle, he chose to throw it into the double coverage. Almost backfired. So Greg Coleman, who had a pulled muscle in the upper right thigh, first time he'd been unable to punt because of injury in his 10-year career, is going to give it a try and will punt from the end zone. Ken Jenkins is back for the Redskins at midfield. Penalty marker is down. Jenkins will let it roll and will stop just shy of midfield. A 38-yard kick. Fred Silva is the referee. He'll explain the penalty. The flag lies about halfway in between. Sometimes that can be a penalty against the team that's receiving the ball. That's the initial indication. Ooh, a holding call against Washington. This will be interesting if it was post-kick or pre-kick. If it was before the kick. Number 45 on the receiving team. Holding. Those possessions, 10 yards, but it'll be a first down. It'll be redskin ball, but they won't have anywhere near the field position they were looking at following that kick. The reason that penalty is interesting, because if it comes before the ball is kicked, that's an automatic first down for Minnesota. Scores from around the league on the early games, and no change on the Giants-Dallas Cowboys score. Meanwhile, the Redskins have a first and 10 at the 40. Jay Schrader, the quarterback. Schrader passes complete to Don Warren, the first down in the Viking territory to the 40-yard line. Joey Browner makes the tackle and a 20-yard pickup on the first play from scrimmage by Washington. Who really hasn't figured prominently in the skin passing game. He's only caught six all year. Just the delay pattern. He stays in on the line of scrimmage, acts like he's blocking. The Viking secondary drops off into coverage. He releases and takes just a four or five-yard pass and turns it into a big play. Coming off his best game of the season when he caught three of those passes in a losing effort against the Giants. First and ten Redskins at the Minnesota 40. George Rogers slices off and gets to the 35-yard line in a game of about five. Let's check the Minnesota defense for you. Doug Martin, Tim Newton, Keith Millard, and Mark Mullaney off injured reserve starting at right end. Chris Martin is the weak side linebacker. Jesse Solomon, the rookie at strong side with the veteran Scott Studwell in the middle. The secondary, Isaac Holden, Carl Lee of the corners, Joey Browner, and John Harris at safety. The Vikings, two new starters defensively, David Howard and Gerald Robinson, both missing today's game. They're on injured reserve. Robinson with a broken leg is out for the season. A tough blow for the Vikings. So it's second and five at the 35 of Minnesota. And it's Rodgers again for a first down inside the 30. Stop made by Tim Newton and Dan. The Redskins sorely wanted to get that running game going. They passed on first down and that looked good. Rest of the offense for the Redskins besides Rodgers, Art Monk and Gary Clark, the wide receivers, two of the best. Don Warren is the tight end. Clint Didier is the H-back or move man. Up front, it's Joe Jacoby, Russ Grimm, Jeff Bostick, and R.C. Thielman. Mark May, the right tackle. First and 10 at the 28th with 12.23 to go in the first quarter. <laughs> Mark 
Raider. And wide open is Warren. And Warren gets to the 24-yard line. Joey Browner makes the tackle. Good gain on first down. But it appears the Redskins have made a decision early that they're going to work underneath. They're sending Clark and Monk deep downfield and just working the soft part of the zone to Don Warren. May not look very spectacular, but a good solid four-yard gain on first down is nothing to sneeze at. And Don Warren, he's getting more work today than he's had in, since practice. And, of course, the Redskins had a tough week trying to get that running game back and, more important, the run defense back, which we'll talk about. Second and six set the 24. They go to Rodgers. And Rodgers gets to the 22, shy of a first down by about three yards or so. And it'll be third and short with Tim Newton and Scott Studwell on the stop. And coming in the ball game for the first time since his injury is Kelvin Bryant. And he's greeted with a nice hand from Washington because they know these are football fans that know how this offense work or doesn't work. And they know what a big part Joe Washington has played here in the past. And Kelvin Bryant is being asked to do even more than Joe. He's a better runner between the tackles than Joe Washington, but just as good a receiver. That's quite a package. They also bring in Ricky Sanders, number 46, a wide receiver. So it's third and four at the 22 of the Vikings. Raider. Finds Didier, and Clint Didier is inside the 10 and another Redskin first down. Joey Browner on the tackle and a pickup of 15 and they're going to the tight end so far. Well, great pass protection is what made this play happen. Just look at the wall up front. One of the best offensive lines in the game, but Jay Schrader has all the time in the world. and He finds Didier who's just sitting out to the right side. Joey Browner comes off when it looked like Schrader was going to run. If you have that much time, you're going to find somebody 100% of the time. So it's first and goal at the eight and George Rogers, the big back, returns to the lineup. Wide receivers out to the left. Rogers off tackle. Inside the five and close to the three-yard line. Jesse Solomon made the play. Good blocking for Rogers on that play. Nothing but solid power football. The battle right now in the first quarter being won up front by the Redskins. Going to the two tight end side, George Rogers. Nothing simple, nothing fancy. But right now, the Vikings already in trouble because of their mistake on the opening kickoff. And even with the penalty against the Redskins, they're paying for it because Bess and Brown had the problem on the kick return. Second and goal at the two, Anthony Jones and Rolly McKenzie, an offensive lineman, now make up three tight ends. And George Rogers will take it in for the touchdown for the Redskins. They made it look easy. George Rogers has now scored a rushing touchdown in 12 consecutive games. And the Redskins take a 6 to nothing lead. Let's look at it from ground level. Again, it's nothing more than who's winning the war up front. And right now, the Redskins' offensive line has served notice. But if you guys don't play a little better against the run, you're going to see it all day long. Max Zendejas. Touchdown in 13 consecutive games. Rodgers now has 12. And with 9-12 remaining in the first quarter, it's 7-0. There's the scoring drive. And as Dan mentioned, the confusion by the Vikings on the opening kickoff helped the Redskins immensely. And now Steve Cox will be kicking off. And once again, deep for the Vikings will be Rufus Best. Dick, I wasn't a defensive ball player, but I wonder what it looks like to be backed up to your own goal line with the Redskins and their goal line offense coming at you. I don't know a team in the league more successful inside the five-yard line than the Skins. And it's Rufus Best at the five-yard line. Rufus Best to the 20. And he's downed at the 26-yard line by Terry Orr. Well, we talked about how close the NFC East has been. They've gone down to the wire every year since then. Dallas won that year by two games over Philadelphia. They both made the playoffs. But in week 15, when the Eagles went against the Cowboys, the Eagles jumped out to a 10-0 lead. But Danny White brought the Cowboys back. This was his second TD pass to Butch Johnson, who California quaked the Cowboys to a 21-10 win and the NFC East crown. One of his best efforts in the end zone, too. Mighty complicated. The history of NFC East races and how tight they've been. 
First and ten Vikings on the 26. Kramer. Forced to run, loses the ball, and it looks as if Neil Okowitz has recovered the fumble for the Redskins. He has. Neil Okowitz comes up with the ball, but he's hit from behind by Charles Mann, number 71. You see him right there at the left side of your screen. He works back to the inside, and he'll strip the football. And Tommy Kramer actually looked like he was going to attempt to throw the football. I'm wondering if he wasn't going to throw it to Steve Jordan, but got hit before he could make a forward motion. The way he was holding the ball up around shoulder level, looked like he might throw it, but nonetheless, Olkowitz recovers the fumble. And now the Redskins threatening again at the Viking 34, first down and 10. Play action to Rodgers. Schrader drills it to Gary Clark, complete to the 15. A gain of 19, and Gary Clark, who set a club record for the Redskins with 241 receiving yards against the Giants last Monday. Again, Jay Schrader gets magnificent pass protection. Look how the alley opens up. He sees it perfectly, and right over the top of Scott Studwell knows that Gary Clark is going to be there. A good play-action fake caused the delay by the Viking defensive lineman, but they've got to come up with a better pass rusher. It's going, I think, to be a very fruitful day for one Mr. Schrader. At the 14, first and 10, Rogers cuts inside and gets a couple. Rodgers coming off his lowest output of the year, gained only 30 yards on 16 carries against the Giants. Mullaney and Solomon on the tackle there. And if the Redskins force the turnovers, they usually come out like that. Well, they're plus one right now, 42-1. and one. That's a remarkable record. And they're off to the good start right now. And Jerry Burns, you know that he doesn't want to have to play catch-up football here at RFK. It's not done very well by many teams. Second and eight. At the 12, Schrader drills it to complete. Art Monk was the intended receiver, and Isaac Holt was covering him on the play. The Vikings perhaps would like to see Schrader roll out a little more. And yeah, we were talking to Floyd Peters, our defensive coordinator, and certainly Jay Schrader, because of the athlete he is, rolls out exceptionally well. But Jay told me himself that he has trouble coming to a stop and completely planning himself before he throws the football. Now that time he did had no one open, but Floyd Peters said the way he's been sprinting out in the past it works to our favor because he hasn't completed a high percentage of his passes. Third and eight at the 12 now. Kelvin Bryant, number 24 in the lineup as the one back. Schrader finds Bryant at the 15. And Bryant is looking out of bounds. Shy of a first down by about four yards, and it was Willie Teal making the stop on Kelvin Bryant. With the type of passing game that we've seen predominantly early from the Skins, that being the short dump-off pass, you'd think the Vikings would be covering the short receiver a little closer, but no one anywhere near Kelvin Bryant. We saw Jesse Solomon, number 54, come into the picture late. You wonder if that was his man, but already moving the ball well are the Redskins as they'll attempt the field goal. Joe Gibbs looking for more points. Max Zendejas with Schrader holding. A 25-yard attempt for Zendejas. And the kick is perfect. And it's 10 to nothing Redskins. Zendejas now three. Has turned up the heat a little bit on his Redskin team. This has been as intense a week of practice as they've had all season long. He even made his defense go back and start working against the tackling dummy because of their poor tackling against Joe Morris last week of the New York Giants and you know he's no dummy he knows that this is the second half push they're tied up three ways in the NFC East and you know what your players don't have to love you as a coach all they have to do is play hard that, uh, that's all that matters Knox came off for the third time gets a deep Bess at the goal line and Bess is stopped shy of the 25 yard line and the Vikings will try again. They've had the ball for four plays, and Kramer fumbled. It was Clarence Verdan who made the stop for the Redskins. So. You know, one of the things so far this year that Tommy Kramer has been doing so well for the Vikings is the way that he's improved his touchdown-to-interception ratio. Tommy has 16 touchdown passes on the year against only six interceptions. That is nothing short of superb. So it was interesting to see him make a mistake here and there early going. He led the NFL with 26 interceptions last year. 
Start from the 23-yard line. Taylor is going to a wide open Jordan who holds on to it. Steve Jordan with a big play to the 30-yard line of the Redskins. And Ken Coffey makes the stop. A great catch will put smiles maybe on the face of Jerry Burns and a gain of 48 yards. When Tommy Kramer releases this pass, I thought it was overthrown by three yards. What an excellent play by Steve Jordan, not only catching up to the football over the outside shoulder, but making the catch and remaining on his feet. That is a, that's an unbelievable show of athletic ability by Steve Jordan. And that's his longest reception of the year, and he comes into the game. Always is an underrated tight end and a leading receiver for Minnesota. That, that's one of the best catches we'll see all year. First and 10 for the Vikings at the 29 of the Redskins. 6.24 remaining in the first quarter. Darren Nelson looking for an opening. And a second effort will get him to the 25-yard line, a gain of four. Vernon Dean on the stop. And that's the final score from Giants Stadium. The Giants have beaten the Dallas Cowboys. Cardinals surprised the Philadelphia Eagles. And so taking a look right now at the updated standings in the NFC East, Giants have the lead, and the Redskins with a win would move into a tie for first place. Raphael Septien missed the 63 yarder in the closing second to assure the Giant victory. Right here at second and six at the 25. Kramer drills it, and Anthony Carter has made the catch inside the 10 with Darrell Green defending. A fine catch by Carter, good for 16 yards. And this is the Vikings going right into the teeth of the defense because Daryl Green, number 28, is going to play one-on-one -on -one with Anthony Carter most of the day today. They're going to put Daryl Green on Carter, by far and away the Vikings' most dangerous receiver. And that time, Anthony, working a well-run sideline route, comes down with the football. Got a great matchup today. Daryl Green and A.C., Anthony Carter. He has four touchdown receptions in his many games. First and goal at the nine for the Vikings. And on the bootleg, Kramer to the five. And Tommy Kramer will get down to the goal line, shy of a touchdown. And it was Darrell Green who prevented six points. And by the look on his face, I would think that Dexter Manley is the man that had contained to that side. Look at the play action. See Manley, 72, get caught inside. There goes Tommy Kramer on a bootleg, and a defensive end just can't get caught to the inside. And luckily for Washington, Daryl Green comes off the block and makes a fine open field tackle. Dan Manley had his problems against the Giants, particularly in the first half of Monday night's game. Yeah, he certainly did. They were doing an awful lot of double teaming against both he and Charles Mann, and they didn't play it very well. Three tight ends, David Huffman, the backup tackle, is the third. In motion is Mike Malarkey. Ted Brown is in standing for the touchdown. And the Vikings, who... We're in a 10 to nothing hole early. Have come back, and Jerry Burns' club can breathe just a little bit easier. Well, this time they're going to run the football away from Huffman, the tight end, who's here to the near side, following the lead blocking of Mike Malarkey, their second tight. End. Coleman will hold. Vikings now trail by three with 4.46 remaining in the first quarter. The Redskins lead to the scoring drive, as Dan mentioned at the outset, looking ahead to the possibility of wild card and victories against everyone, including teams that could be tied with you, are important. Chuck Nelson will be kicking off for Minnesota. Ken Jenkins and Clarence Verdan are back, back and it's Jenkins at the five-yard line. Strong run back, but he stopped hard at the 25-yard line. Making the play is Carl Hilton. Well, the Redskins are 2-2 two two against the Vikings at RFK Stadium, but they remember beating the Vikings in the 1982 Super Bowl tournament game. It was 21-7, and it was the conference semifinal, January the 15th, and John Riggins that day set a Redskin playoff record, 37 carries, 185 yards. There was the bow, and the Redskins went on to win, then went to the Super Bowl. Riggins took a bow for the crowd. Playoff win for the Redskins over the Vikings. Meanwhile, first and 10 for Jay Schrader on the 26. Sprints out to the left. Under some pressure, going deep for Gary Clark. And the rebuff, but they call Carl Lee. And now they 
throw the flag. Carl Lee bumped Gary Clark and a late flag, but one that's good. Well, Carl Lee definitely fell into the back of Gary Clark. He was with him just stride for stride. I really didn't see the need to make contact, but this is definitely going to work against Minnesota. Gary Clark, who, along with Art Monk, give Washington the leading pair of pass receivers in the National Football League through the halfway point of this season. We don't get the call from the referee. At the bottom of the screen, Carl Lee stride for stride with Clark. There's the contact in the back right there. That's what brought the flag. And a 44-yard penalty gives the Redskins the ball at the Minnesota 30, first and 10. Four and a half minutes to go, first quarter. Rogers off left tackle this time. And picks up about five yards. Scott Studwell, the middle linebacker, making the tackle on George Rogers. There's Studwell, has been around a long time, and only Jeff Seaman of the Vikings. More tackles in their career than Scott Studwell. gain of three it'll be second down and seven at the 27 yard line and Rogers who gained 30 yards last week already has 27 flag down we may have a holding penalty as Schrader is forced out of bounds at the 27 yard line and the flag was thrown back of the line of scrimmage Mark May the right offensive tackle was working against Doug Martin and as they went right in front of the referee that's when we saw the flag as we see it being talked over with Studwell he's he's at nobody on the field wants to make a decision <laughs> anymore they always ask the coach offense number 73 only and it is indeed, Dan, Mark May, all you offensive linemen know when all you cohorts hold. Well, the, today is Mark May's birthday, and that's not quite the present he had in mind, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, the referee, his really, his sole assignment is to watch the quarterback, but the only offensive lineman that he pays much attention to is the right tackle because he moves right across his face. If you're going to hold, try to do it someplace other than 18 inches away from the referee. Delvin Bryant in the lineup, second and 17 after 37. Six defensive backs for Minnesota. Schrader backpedals a long way and gets it to Bryant. Bryant goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line. It'll be third and about 12. Jesse Solomon making the tackle on Kelvin Bryant, whose great asset is that he makes you miss him. And, of course, the Redskins don't have many backs who can do that. I guess one of the things about Kelvin Bryant, Jesse Solomon there, who made the play, is that he's not as big as a lot of people thought he was. I mean, I always had the impression when he was over in the USFL that, that he was a big, burly type of back, but Dick, he's far from it. No, oh, Herschel Walker is the big back out of the USFL, and Kelvin Bryant, they thought coming out of that league would be more spectacular. It hasn't turned out that way so far. Third and 13, back at the 33. Later. Overthrows Gary Clark by a mile, and it'll be fourth down. Holt and Harris were in the vicinity. Once again, scores from around the league. And some of the West Coast games just getting underway. Schrader had a Viking defensive lineman fall against his leg as he released the ball, and he's limping a bit. The backup quarterback, by the way, is Doug Williams, who looked awfully good in preseason. Max Zendejas will try a long one now. Steve Cox normally tries the long field goals for the Redskins, but Zendejas will attempt one from 51 yards. And this kick is no good. Just short, though it be on the mark. And so the Vikings, following that pass interference penalty, 57 yarder was the longest of the season in the NFL. First down, Kramer with a fake going deep, and it's caught by Leo Lewis, and Lewis will race into the end zone for a touchdown. 
He beat Jordan and Dean and 67 yards for Tommy Kramer, his 17th touchdown pass of the season. And there was a penalty flag down against the Redskins, declined, and the touchdown will stand. So the Vikings were trailing 10 to nothing early here at RFK Stadium, and they have shocked Joe Gibbs and the Redskins. He's just going to work one-on-one -on -one with Vernon Dean. Contact, illegal contact, that's what drew the flag. But Leo Lewis just simply outruns Vernon Dean. Curtis Jordan, he's just too late to get in on the play. And, boy, that was nothing fancy whatsoever. That was just Lewis beating Dean. And that was the longest touchdown pass and the longest pass play this year for the Minnesota Vikings. And Chuck Nelson will attempt the extra point as the Vikings lead 13 to 10. And the kick is good. It's 14 to 10 Minnesota and the first touchdown reception of the year for little. Chuck Nelson will kick off Ken Jenkins on the left Clarence Verdan on the right and a quiet RFK stadium with 311 remaining in the first quarter. Verdan at the 10 yard line. Verdan with good speed, one of the USFL receivers who joined the Redskins and kind of modeled after the Smurfs that they used to have here. Stopped by Walker Lee Ashley. Well, we'll have a moment. I want to remind you that next Saturday on CBS Sports, there's an important battle in the Atlantic Coast Conference. North Carolina takes their 5-2-1 and one record and goes against Clemson in Clemson, 6-2, and two, and both of those teams they're in the midst of a fight for the ACC championship. Or you can see a Pac-10 pairing between Stanford and UCLA. Both have 6-2 and two records next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. 1.30 Central on CBS Sports. First and 10 for the Redskins on the 28th. Rogers stopped in his tracks. Mark Mullaney and Doug Martin were there. So the Vikings put together 14 points in a minute and 35 seconds to make up for a 10-0 deficit. And what a confidence builder that is for a team. I've, you know, with St. Louis, I've been here so many years and been behind early and just watched as a route develops before halftime. And the Minnesota Vikings right now have to be a little heady about their ability not only to get back into this game, but take the lead. Less than two and a half minutes remaining, first quarter, second and long. Delvin Bryant. The ball game. Schrader goes up top for Didier, and it's knocked away and nearly intercepted. Joey Browner in on the play. Pro Bowl player Joey Browner, the strong safety. That time the skins challenging the middle of the field with Didier. He's in the slot. You're going to see him just run a straight fly pattern, but good reaction there by both Harris and Browner as they converge on the football. And you've got three defensive backs around the football. Either the quarterback shouldn't have thrown it or you're getting superb defensive back play. That time, I think it was more on the part of the Vikings in good play. Third down and 12 at the 26. Redskins in their own territory. Schrader. It's tipped. Knocked away, and Kelvin Bryant was wide open on the left flank. The pass was intended for Gary Clark, and Rufus Best got a hand on it. It'll be fourth down, and Steve Cox will come in to kick. A simple four pattern, a crossing pattern by Gary Clark, but Rufus Best did indeed get a hand on the football, and if he wouldn't have, it looked like a completion all the way to Gary Clark, who was operating in that middle envelope between the Viking zone. He would have caught it if it wasn't for Best. So Cox, the leading punter in the NFC, will kick to the man who just made the defensive play. Busy first quarter for Rufus Best. High spiral and a fair catch called for by Best. And it takes a Minnesota roll, and it's finally downed at the 43-yard line by the Redskins. A kick of 31 in good field position. Let's go back now to 1983. This was the standings at the finish with Washington and Dallas moving on to the playoffs and the Redskins winning the division. And once again, week 15 was the magic week. It was all Washington in their rivalry with the Dallas Cowboys. Joe Theismann tossed two touchdown passes, including this 43-yard pass to Art Monk as Washington clinched the division title with a 31-10 win. 
And that long pattern is something that Monk used to do a lot more of. More short passing for him these days. At the 42, Kramer under pressure. Throws it off to Darren Nelson into Redskin territory. And Darren Nelson jitterbugs his way to the 41-yard line, a gain of 16 in a first down with Rich Mallott finally bringing down Nelson. It's hard to find a better executed screen than the Vikings just ran. Look how they bunch up the Redskin defensive linemen and turn them all loose. The convoy of purple jerseys out in front of Darren Nelson. He smartly takes it outside, and then he's going to break it back to the inside right here behind the block of Terry Tausch. And boy, that was a, just a really well-executed play by Minnesota. They're looking very sharp early. He gained 100 yards, did Nelson, last week. First time for a Viking running back. Leading rusher, second leading receiver. Just to do it all in motion. First and 10 at the 41, and Kramer is down. And, Man and he's running. Manley will get credit for the sack back at the 46 and a loss of five. That's a good call by the official. The reason Kramer went down is he had one leg knocked out from under him by Dexter Manley. So that's a good call by the official. Manley now has seven sacks in his last four games, and he has come on. Since 82, no one has been better. And not many people would think that Dexter Manley has more sacks than Lawrence Taylor, certainly the most celebrated pass rusher in the game right now. Second and 14. Back at the 45. Nickel defense in for the Redskins. Kramer. Incomplete. Darren Nelson was the receiver. And Curtis Jordan. Nelson was there. They had another wide receiver down as well. Malarkey. And Jordan was defending on the play. And the Redskins defensive line doing exactly what they want to do. They're forcing Tommy Kramer to move before a receiver breaks open. They're making Tommy move a couple of yards, then set up and throw, and that's certainly a goal that you'd like to always do as a defensive lineman, never give him that four or five to sit in the pocket. Any quarterback in this game with that much time will burn him. Third and 14. 33 seconds remain in the first quarter. As he's hit, Leo Lewis lunges incomplete. And tremendous pressure. Dave Butts and Steve Hamilton both put pressure on Kramer. And it'll be fourth down. Tommy has a little more time this time than last time. Watch Dave Butts on the loop. He's going to get there, force Tom to throw it. But he's asking a little much of Leo Lewis this time. That would have been certainly a highlight film catch overthrown by a good couple of yards. Greg Coleman will be in. We punt for the second time, and Ken Jenkins is standing at the 10 for the Redskins. 14 to 10, the Vikings lead the Redskins after Washington moved out to an early 10 to nothing lead. Good high kick, fair catch called by Jenkins, and Browner will down it at the two-yard line. And Coleman is delighted with that maneuver, a kick of 42. More important, the bad field position for the Redskins. And what a play by Joey Browner getting up in the air and bringing down the football before it made it into the end zone. And now it's the Redskins who have to play a little football with their back to their own end zone. What a turnaround as far as Minnesota is concerned here in the first quarter. Jay Schrader, whose record as a quarterback since he took over for Joe Theismann last year, 11 wins and only three losses. Coming into the game leading the NFC in passing yardage. And a gutty leader. I'd throw it right here. I love to throw out of your own end zone. Ball is at the three. That's what he's going to do. Incomplete. Didier, the intended receiver, and Studwell and Browner were there. He's got a bullet of an arm, does Jay Schrader. He really does, and this is a smart pass. It's a high percentage play, the quick slant. This one is seldom intercepted. If it's right there, it's normally caught, and that was just an excellent defensive play that time by Joey Browner. He was just right on the coverage, anticipated that throw perfectly. The Schrader has now missed his last four passing attempts. That's how much time remains in the first quarter, second and ten. He'll throw again. He's in trouble. 
And he completes the pass to Don Warren. And Warren gets it out to the 15 and a Redskin first down. Great ad living by Jay Schrader in the end zone and a pickup of 12. That looked like a sack and a safety all the way as Jay Schrader just has no alternative but to break to his right. It's closed off as Timmy Newton puts on the pressure and even throws it to a covered man. But poorly played by Chris Martin and Don Warren picks up the Redskin first down. And that's the end of the first quarter here at RFK Stadium. Visiting Minnesota Vikings lead the Redskins 14 to 10. Dick Stockton and Dan Deardorff, they start the second quarter. The first and 10 for the Redskins on their own 15. George Rogers stopped at the 15. No gain, Jesse Solomon on the tackle. The Redskins had the edge in time of possession. Rushing yardage, but it was the passing yardage for the Vikings, and that was a 48-yard pass to Jordan, which set up their first touchdown. And, of course, the 67-yard bomb to Leo Lewis, which put him in front. Second and a long nine. Again, they go to Rogers, and Rogers gets the same. Very little. Mark Mullaney, the 12 year veteran who had a torn tendon in his knee, coming off injured reserve and starting at right defensive end. One of the things that Minnesota is doing. I think Mullaney anticipating a sunny day with the shield on there. <laughs> 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 a lot of players who've had eye problems, like Mark Mullaney, wear a, a clear plastic shield. But I must admit, that's the Darth. first time I've seen the Darth Vader look by Mark Mullaney. I, I guess when you're cool, the sun always shines. <laughs> Third down and nine with Kelvin Bryant in the game for the Redskins. Raider, game on and a long pass for Gary Clark. And Dropped it incomplete. That time Clark had it in his hands. Isaac Holt defended. And a fine pass by Schrader goes for North. Well, you're exactly right. A fine pass. Watch this ball come in in perfect position, right on the hands, a chest level. Gary Clark has it all the way. Holt never has a, the chance to turn around and see when the football is coming in. And that is just plain and simple a drop by Gary Clark. Although it's pretty tough to get down on this guy after the week he had last week. He had an outstanding game, and Steve Cox will be kicking to Rufus Bess. Gary Clark, who had a good year last year, just starting in 10 games. Cox with a line drive kick, and Bess at the 41 on the run. And Bess does not get to midfield, and a tremendous play. Tim Morrison was one of the Redskins in on the play. All of them find special team cover. In the low threes, look at Seattle, five and a half yards. The Giants last week, five and a half yards. You know, some of those defensive guys want to say, well, that's just Joe Morris and that's Kurt Warner. But you know what? Excuses like that don't work. Kramer going deep on first down for Anthony Carter incomplete. Today, well, kind of the same. Well, no, a much improved situation for the Redskins. Yeah, well, Minnesota has been doing so well throwing the football that uh, they really haven't had much of either a need or a desire to run the football. That's a statistic that we'll take a look at again in the fourth quarter. We'll see how that holds up during the course of a football game. Second and 10 for Tommy Kramer and the Vikings at their own 47-yard line, their best starting field position of the ball game. 14 to 10, Minnesota. Kramer. Incomplete for Ted Brown, and he got rid of it in the nick of time. Todd Bowles was defending the good-looking free agent rookie from Temple. Bowles playing on nickel teams, a big play player who impressed in preseason, and he and Alvin Walton, the rookie from Kansas, won jobs. Talking about the Redskins' defense and their pressure that they've been facing this week, not only from the coaching staff, but from the community. Uh, Neil Lokowitz has a newspaper article hanging in his locker talking about poor linebacker play haunts the Redskins. They're getting a little sensitive. The passing yard is heavily favors the Vikings, but this is a running play to Alfred Anderson, who stopped for a loss of the play by a yard, and it'll be fourth down. 
Curtis Jordan, with the help from Charles Mann, made the tackle. So the best starting field position for the Vikings means nothing, and it'll be fourth down, and Coleman will kick again. Ken Jenkins goes back for Washington. Less than three minutes gone by here in the second quarter with the Vikings leading 14 to 10. Fair catch. Jenkins at the 14-yard line. We've gone back in years to NFC East races settled in the 15th week. Let's go back to 1984. Washington and Dallas. Dallas leading 21 to 6 and then Dettel beating the Cowboys 30 to 28. First and 10 at the 14. For the Redskins, Art Monk in motion. Schrader with a good fake. And Didier cannot hold on to the ball. He was being chased by the rookie Jesse Solomon, but it looked like he was there. Floyd Peters, the Viking defensive coordinator, has got to figure some way of getting more pressure on Jay Schrader. That's the second consecutive Schrader pass that's been dropped. That time it was Didier's turn. Remember, Gary Clark dropped the long one. Jesse Solomon, who had the initial good coverage, fell a step or two off. That could have been a nice redskin game. Solomon missed his last three games with a hamstring pull. Diamond in the rough, 12th round pick from Florida State. Chris Goldman has now come in replacing Chris Martin at linebacker. Second and 10 at the 14. This time it's Kelvin Bryan, and Bryan is tackled in the backfield by Joey Browner. Check that, that's Mark Mullaney, not Browner. Mullaney limping ever so slightly and made a good play on Bryant. Not sure how he saw him, but uh, he must have been <laughs> feeling his way. <laughs> he heard footsteps, and that was a good thing that time. You know, they say, you know, if you're an instinctive player, you play by feel. I think <laughs> that what Alex Kara said. That was a fine play that time by Mark Mullaney, tracking that down from the backside. <laughs> Third down and 11. And the Redskins backed up now. Schrader has completed only one of his last seven passes. Breaks it with a completed pass and a first down to Gary Clark to the 38-yard line. 25-yard pickup, Jesse Solomon and Rufus Best on the play. I think right about now is when the Viking secondary starts saying, hey guys, how about a pass rush up front? Just a simple zone, finds a soft spot in the middle, does Gary Clark before John Harris can react in on the play. He's got it and already got his feet under him. And forces Harris to miss the tackle. Gary Clark is going to have another big day if Schrader continues to have that much time to set up and throw. And it's been Clark more than Art Monk who's been the chief target for Schrader. First and ten on the Redskins 38. Another play action pass and this time they go deep and it is Art Monk's turn and he can't hold on. Incomplete. Carl Lee was defending on the play and the words no sooner out of our mouth and Art Monk gets the call. And again, Jay Schrader turns around, puts his hands on his hips. He has to say to himself, I just cannot throw it any better than this. This is marvelous touch on a football because make no mistake about it, Art Monk didn't exactly run away from Carl Lee, but a perfectly thrown pass, and it ends up for absolutely nothing. And last year's leaders, as you pointed out earlier, the best tandem wide receiving group in the National Football League was Art Monk and Gary Clark. Since 84, Monk has them all beat. Second and 10 at the 38. intended for Didier incomplete with Browner covering it'll be third down George Rogers gave the Redskins a lead first time they had the ball Max Zendejas following a fumble recovery by Neil Okowitz kicked a 25 yard field goal it was 10 to nothing and then Tommy Kramer went to the air a 48 yard pass to Steve Jordan ultimately it was Ted Brown for the score and then following a 
missed field goal by Zendayas from 51 yards. It was Leo Lewis on the end of a 67-yard pass from Kramer to make it 14-10. to 10. Third and 10 at the 38. He's being chased by Tim Newton. And Schrader will go out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Got back what he could, but it'll be fourth down, and Steve Cox will come in the game. And I'm very impressed with Minnesota and their defensive backfield, how well they're covering with some receivers. I know we've seen some, some drop footballs by the Redskins receivers, but those people have been covered by and large. And that time, Schrader had nowhere to go, had no choice but to run the football. The thing about Jay Schrader, he's going to have to be careful now because he's had some drop passes to not try to force it in there. We'll watch in the next series or two. Bess is back, and Cox will kick with 10.35 remaining in the first half. It's quieted down considerably here at RFK Stadium. Good high spiral, and Best decides to call for the fair catch, but there's a penalty marker down at about the 45-yard line. Talk about Schrader. He has 103 yards passing, Dan, but has lost about 100 yards in those drop passes. <laughs> You're right. He'd be well over 200 yards. An eligible receiver downfield, the call. We'll have to kick it again if Minnesota wants the Redskins to, which they probably will. But Jay Schrader is going to have to be careful not to start forcing the football. He's had a couple beautiful passes dropped in a young quarterback just so he doesn't try to do more than he's already doing. If he just keeps playing the way he is, he'll be fine. Kicking team, number 78. Illegal, downfield, five yards, three kick. Dean Hamill who lost his starting job at defensive tackle to Darrell Grant this past week. Still shaking his head, so Cox will go back to about the 20 to kick it away. A shaking head, never got a flag put back into the pocket. <laughs> or, or shaking anything. Is <laughs> Bess on the receiving end once more. This is a good kick, too. Bess is going to run this one back, however, from the 11. And a fine play by Todd Bowles. Now you know why that free agent rookie won a job with the Redskins. That kind of hustle. And Dan Deerdorf, and it's 14-10 to 10 in favor of Minnesota. After spotting the Redskins 10 points, Tommy Kramer successful going to the air, but the Vikings do not have good starting position here from their own 14, and the crowd can sense something. time and gets it out to Ted Brown. Brown got away from Ken Coffey and got a few extra yards out to about the 18-yard line, make it the 19, before Neil Okowitz makes the stop on the eight-year veteran. Minnesota went back to what worked well for them before. That's the screen pass. Bob Schnelker, the offensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, calling a good game so far. Protecting his quarterback with the screen. Teddy Brown picks up good, solid yardage on first down. Just a little more than 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. And the crowd yelling for the Redskin defense to make something happen. Kramer on a design rollout finds an open Darren Nelson. And Darren Nelson will have the first down, crossing the 25. It was Rich Malott and Curtis Jordan combined to make the stop at the 27. This looks like a page out of the Redskins playbook, just the all-out sprint out, but he's forced to set up quick because of how fast Charles Mann got upfield. You now, and Tommy Kramer, if there's an open man on the field, there's no question that he's going to find him. That time it was Darren Nelson, an easy first down. Tommy Kramer just looks extremely sharp at quarterback for Minnesota, having his best year ever. He got hurt in 83, and Gary Burns says that he looks as good as he did before he got hurt that year. First and 10 at the 27, and Kramer going up on top for Jordan, the tight end, incomplete. It was the other Jordan, Curtis Jordan, and Ken Coffey combined him to make the stop. And Steve Jordan complaining that he wanted a, a holding call that time against Washington, no flag thrown. So they'll bring it back and do it again. Kramer now has completed six of 13 passes for 160 yards and one touchdown. 
He now has 17 touchdown passes on the year and only six interceptions. A tremendous ratio, as Dan pointed out, in deep contrast to last season. Second and 10 with the 27. Vikings in their own zone. Kramer gets the pass to Darren Nelson, and it'll be a first down for the Vikings at the 39. It was a nifty pass and catch by Nelson, and good for 13 yards. And Darren Nelson was working one-on-one -on -one with Angelo Snipes, another one of the USFL ballplayers here in Washington, and he just cleanly beats him going to the sideline. Snipes is a step behind, wasn't as close as he looked like on the replay as Nelson was two yards farther upfield, and he's not even able to make the tackle after the completion. And that's something that Jerry Burns has said all week he wanted to do, isolate his skilled position people on the Redskin linebackers. So Mark in at the 40, first and 10. So the Vikings started this drive on their own 14, got out of danger. Hammer finds Jordan, who drops the ball. Steve Jordan out of Brown University. Just didn't concentrate on that play, and it'll be second and 10. And that was a tight end screen. Another screen pass being called by Minnesota. But you know, a drop pass, that's something that uh, Tommy Kramer has seen so often throughout the years, that's not going to adversely affect him at all. The way the play looked, I don't know that Jordan wasn't well off dropping the football. It really wasn't a very well-conceived play that time. It may not have gone for positive yardage. The Redskins, as they do in their nickel package, take out all of their starting backers, Daniels, Olkowitz, and Malad, and they bring in Todd Bowles, Alvin Walton, and Angelo Snipes, who was beaten a couple of plays ago. Second and 10 for the Vikings on their own 40. They lead 14 to 10, 9.08 remaining in the first half. And a fumble, and it's going to be Dexter Manley to run it in. and it was Dennis Swilly, the culprit for the Vikings, the offensive center. First career touchdown for Dexter Manley, and the Redskins regain the lead on a fluke play, but one they'll take. Zendeja has the kick blocked. No good, and a very important point Goes by the boards for the Redskins. They lead by two instead of three. But here's the big touchdown. And sometimes it's just your day. It hits Tommy Kramer, and it's going to one-hop right into the arms of Dexter Manley. In the right place at the right time. And a dream come true for a defensive lineman as Dexter Manley takes the sweetest stroll in sports. <laughs> goes back, and Steve Cox kick off for the Redskins with exactly nine minutes remaining in the first half and a short kick and it's going to be taken up front by Alfred Anderson and Anderson is down at the 29 yard line by Clarence Verdan 1985 the Cowboys and the Giants and the Redskins all finished 10 and 6 but the Cowboys and Giants advanced to the playoffs will happen the 15th week this year what do we say now? Stay tuned. <laughs> First and 10, Alfred Anderson at the 27-yard line. Piled up, and now the Redskin defense is around. Ken Coffey was right in there. Dexter Manley wasn't in on that first down play. Checks into the lineup. Dean Hamill will come on out, and he was busy talking on the sideline. Might have been getting some oxygen. <laughs> Defensive linemen don't normally have to run that far. There are the play selections, and both teams have gone to the air more. Dexter urging the crowd to get behind his skins. As you saw, the Vikings relying predominantly with the pass. Second and 10 at the 27. 16 to 14, the Redskins. Kramer. Leo Lewis over his head and defended on the play by Vernon Dean. And you got to get that ball down against little 5'8 Leo Lewis. Kirk Loudermilk is now at center for the Vikings, replacing 
veteran Dennis Willie. Well, well, Willie didn't appear to be injured on the play, so it's obviously just a coaching change by the Vikings deciding to replace Willie, who had that high snap. And anybody who thinks that that shotgun snap is easy ought to get down there and try it. A blind snap, you can't see your quarterback. The crowd is noisy. It's, it happens more often than some people think it does. Ah, you were at center at some time. And you know, I did it here one time, too. Third and 10 at the 27. Kramer. Getting a rush. Penalty marker down and the pass for Anderson incomplete. It was Todd Bowles defending. Kramer wants a flag. There was one thrown at the line of scrimmage and Dexter Manley is all excited. That call goes against Minnesota holding. But there was contact or contact rather back in the secondary. And I think Minnesota, who anticipated a flag. 65. Only decline. Gary Zimmerman. Against Washington, in turn, had one go against themselves. And Tommy Kramer and the entire Viking bench not pleased about that at all. It's fourth down, and Coleman will be kicking. Jenkins at the 35. at the 37th. And Jenkins returns it into Viking territory at the 46-yard line. Return of 15 yards. Tackled by Walker Lee Ashley. And to clarify the center position for the Vikings, Swilly was the man who made that errant snap to Kramer. Loudermilk had been in for a couple of plays earlier. In a loss of three, and the second game of our doubleheader will be the New York Giants against the Philadelphia Eagles, who were beaten by the Cardinals, your old club today. And it come from behind. Stump Mitchell, I guess, scored a touchdown in the final minute of play to win it for St. Louis. We're halfway through the second quarter here. So now as you take a look at the standings, including division standings, where Dallas has the edge right now. Second down and 12 for the Redskins at the Viking 49. Leading 16 to 14. Schrader wide open is Art Monk. Monk to the 39 yard line. Willie Teal on the tackle. It'll be third and long now for the Redskins. Third and about seven. What does Jay Schrader see as he looks to the sideline? He sees a play being flashed in through the set of hand signals that is still the old Don Coriel system being used here in Washington. Gibbs, as everyone knows, the former assistant with Don Coriel and almost more teams in the league that use that hand signaling system of Coriel's and teams that don't. Don Grow, the man who does that duty. Third and seven, Kelvin Bryan is in the game. Good pressure on Schrader. Schrader going deep incomplete, intended for Didier, covered by Willie Teal. Browner was also in the vicinity, and you saw what that pressure meant to Jay Schrader. Fourth down, and Cox will come in to punt. Well, the Vikings haven't been putting much of a pass rush on Jay Schrader, and that time they came with the safety blitz. John Harris came in on the blitz, and they were effective. They forced Schrader to throw that ball before he would have liked, thus the incompletion. Got off a of beauty the last time for 53 yards as best goes back. 6-11 on the clock in the first half. Fair catch. And it's caught there by Lewis at the 14-yard line. A winner today over Buffalo. So things aren't just a gift for the Bears in the NFC Central. First and 10 at the 14-yard line, and Alfred Anderson fights his way close to the 20-yard line. Rich Mulata, Neil Okowitz on the stop. Anderson, who had carried only eight times in the last four games coming into this game, replacing Alan Rice, who is available. He suffered a bruised shoulder, and Rice is the second leading rusher for Minnesota. Even if the Vikings don't get points off this drive, they can ill afford to just have three plays and out and turn it back over to the Redskins with five and a half minutes left in the half. They need to get at least two or three first downs and make Washington start well 
into their own territory. Quick handoff, and they tried to trap the Ted Brown. The Redskins closed at the 20-yard line. Darrell Grant making the stop. Brown with a touchdown, his first of the year. He had 10 last year. Only seven running backs had more scores than Ted Brown a year ago. Anthony Carter has been strangely silent so far in this ballgame. As we mentioned early, Daryl Green going with him one-on-one. -on -one. They split to the near side of the field, and AC, he's been removed from the Viking offense. He's caught only one pass. Second, third, and three at the 21. Kramer completes the pass to Carter. Out of bounds, shy of the 25, close to a first down. Darrell Green defending on the play, and we may have a measurement. It looks as if the Vikings have the first down. And it actually was Anthony Carter that fell down running his pass route as he does get the first down. He's just trying to work a short pattern, but watch him lose his footing right there. His right foot goes out from underneath him, and yet he's an athlete enough to come back and make the recovery and get the ball. That's fine work by Anthony Carter. Injured reserve the first four games of this season. And Jerry Burns said that he thought that wide receiving position would be a strength. A lot of them haven't been helpful. Hassan Jones has been shaken up. First and 10 at the 25. 440 on the clock. Moving in the line. And back at the 20 yard line, Charles Mann gets Kramer for a sack, his second of the ball game. But Manley was across the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. If he went on his own, that, that sack's not going to stand. It's not. You're right. Defense, right hand. Offside. Five yards. Manley was so excited about his touchdown earlier that he wanted to tell the Viking offensive lineman about it again. Well, he knows that scent when it's a pass rushing situation, and he just can't hold himself across the line of scrimmage clearly when the ball snaps. So a sack is removed from the books. Now it's a first and five situation. That's a Rob Schnelker likes this. They've been running a lot of screens so far in this ball game, being effective with them. This might be a good time for them. First and five at the 30. 16 to 14, Washington leading Minnesota. Kramer tips Leo Lewis incomplete. Olkowitz in the middle there, and it'll be third down. Third down and make it second and five. After the penalty, it was first down. 4.06 on the clock. Vikings with a five and three record, their best halfway record in three years. Three years ago, they won six of their first eight, but won only two games the rest of the year. run and a quick pass to Jordan who bobbles and holds on for a first down at the 43 Ken Coffey and Curtis Jordan and a quick pop good for 13 yards and it's a blitz this time by the skins their outside linebackers come Kramer reads it Jordan reads it he makes his release to the inside and that's a smart play between a veteran quarterback and, a, and what some people think is most underrated tight end in the game of football Steve Jordan certainly may have the softest set of hands for a tight end he caught 68 passes, most by any tight end last year, but the problem was getting touchdown scores, and he managed to change that this year. He's caught two. First and 10 at the 42-yard line of the Vikings, and Darren Nelson gets loose, close to midfield of the 49, where Dexter Manley makes the tackle, and a pickup of seven yards, and Manley slow getting up. Dexter limping slightly, but he's going to re remain in the ball game, and already... Minnesota has done what they wanted to do. We're down to three minutes, and they've got the ball up at midfield as we're going to see Steve. number 64, Steve Hamilton, in. Dexter's out. Dennis Willey, by the way, is back in its center for Minnesota. Second and four. Kramer up the middle, completes the pass to Jordan. And a first down into Redskin territory at the 39, Ken Coffey. On the stop, and that pass to Jordan, good for 14 yards. And Kenny Coffey is having his hands full with Steve Jordan. When the field is a little loose like this, it is definitely an asset to the receiver. If he knows how to plan himself and how to make his adjustment, it's tougher on the DB, and that time Coffey went to the ground when Jordan made his hook pattern back to the inside. 
Coffey had his problems because he's been bothered by a knee injury against the Giants, and Alvin Walton, a rookie, came in. First and 10 at the 39. Close to the two-minute warning. Kramer to a wide open. Jordan again. Steve Jordan and another first down at the 20-yard line and 19 yards. Big chunks of yardage from Kramer to Steve Jordan. Washington sitting back in their zone. You can see in the picture Curtis Jordan dropping straight back, but someone blows the coverage as Steve Jordan found a spot to the right side of the field. Calvin Daniels gets there, but way too late. Jordan found himself about a five-yard square area and just sat there. Kramer finally saw him and got him the football. This may be the last play before the two-minute warning. The Vikings started on their own 14. Kramer has thrown to Jordan three times for 46 yards on this drive. And Alfred Anderson gets about a yard and a half. And we will now have our two-minute warning. This quarterback is seeing during the course of a football game, and he gets that presence from the sideline. Second down and nine. And now the Vikings are going to use one of their numbers. Agreed. Second and nine at the 19. That was a great pitch. 157 to go, and Hassan Jones, who's been shaken up, number 84, is in there. Inside handoff to Alfred Anderson. Good gain for Anderson to the 12-yard line. Two yards shy of a first down. There's the time remaining, and the stop was made by the safeties, Ken Coffey and Curtis Jordan. Right now, the Vikings not in too much of a hurry because they're in good position in case they have to try for three. And they still do have two timeouts remaining, so they have all the time in the world. And this is, remember back at the beginning of this drive, I said, well, maybe points aren't so important, just get a couple first downs. They've done that, but more. Now that they're here, though, I'm afraid they've got to come away with points. And now we will have a timeout called by the Redskins. Three tight end offense. On third and two at the 12. And slicing off and scoring with a penalty marker down is Darren Nelson. A touchdown for the Vikings, but let's wait and see. And the flag was thrown right at the line, and the preliminary signal is holding against Minnesota. That's what it is. It'll nullify the touchdown. Offense, but, number 66, holding. Terry Tausch, the right guard, holding, and they will not get the six. What a right, uh, what a great call. There is Terry Tosh right there. We're going to see the trap to the inside as he blocks down, rub off, and then let's see if we can pick up the hold. Terry Tosh right there as he comes across. He's going to make contact. The left arm is out there. Let's see if we can pick it up. Darren Nelson breaks to the inside. Boy, it's really tough to see it from that angle if Tosh is holding or not, but the flag came down regardless. Third down and 12, back at the 22-yard line. Kramer will throw. Intended for Lewis out of the end zone. It'll be fourth down. Vernon Dean was covering on the play. So the touchdown was nullified on the holding call. And now Chuck Nelson will come in with a minute and 11 seconds remaining in the first half to try to give the Vikings the lead again. Keep in mind that Max Zendejas had his conversion blocked on the last touchdown by the Redskins. So the lead was two instead of three, and now Nelson, who is 10 of 13 for the year, will try for 39 yards with Greg Coleman holding. And this kick is good, and the Minnesota Vikings have taken a one-point lead, 17 to 16 on Chuck Nelson's field goal with that much time remaining. And the kick is picked up by Terry Orr. And Orr is stopped at the 29-yard line. Again, the Giants beat the Dallas Cowboys. The Cardinals beat the Philadelphia Eagles. So this is the way the standings look, and we always keep one eye on the division. Next week, the Redskins travel to Green Bay. And the Giants will go against the Eagles. They want the Eagles in their earlier meeting at Giants Stadium. 
102 on the clock, and the Redskins have two timeouts remaining, trailing by one point, 17 to 16. At the 29, first and 10. Raider to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant with some fancy footwork. And it's Jesse Solomon who drives him back about a yard or so shy of a first down and under a minute to play. Quickly lining up for the Redskins. Monk on the left and Clark wide right. Raider getting a rush from Newton. And nowhere to go with it, goes out of bounds. He stops the clock with 27 seconds, but that's not the kind of yardage he was looking for. Shy of a first down by a couple of yards. Depending on where they spot that ball, that may even go in the books as a sack, and I think it will as he actually lost a yard on the play. Willie Chia is guarding Monk. And they go short and incomplete for Clint Didier. Rufus Bess was defending and the crowd getting a bit antsy now. And it's fourth down and a long one with 23 seconds. This time it's Clint Didier who loses his footing. He goes to make a break to the outside and he had lost his footing before that. He made a good recovery to get a hand on the football before Carl Lee who was in good position for an interception, but Didier wouldn't have been that far to the inside if he wouldn't have slipped. That wasn't a poor throw by Schrader. Bess is back, and Steve Cox kicking it away. And the ball will roll inside the 10 and go out of bounds inside the 10 with only 14 seconds. You all get in the playoffs by virtue of a wild card. And a loss today really hurts the skin because you know the Vikings are going to be there. You know they're going to have a record. First half. Ben Jenkins was deep. Chuck Nelson kicked it off, and it's into the end zone. A good kick for Dan. Downs it there. And uh, the Redskins will take it out on the 20-yard line first and 10. And, of course, we were talking about how George Rogers, who gained only 30 yards against the Giants Monday night, Looked like he was going to top that early, but he only has 24 yards and 11 carries at halftime. Yeah, when you take into consideration how Washington started moving the ball when they went out to that 10 to nothing lead, it looked like the route was on. Again, credit Minnesota for not folding their 10 early. It would have been easy. So Jay Schrader comes out. 10 of 21 for 117 yards. And Schrader running all the way gets it that's out of bounds at the 25 Scott Studwell on the play in a gain of five you almost get the feeling that something went wrong on that play it's hard to imagine them just having Schrader on a bootleg all the way the, o the only receiver he had to that side of the field was Clint Didier and he wasn't working the type of route that would have uh, complemented a sprint out so I wonder if there wasn't some confusion in the Redskin backfield Second down and five at the 25. Wide receivers out to the left. George Rogers off tackle. Joey Browner makes the stop shy of a first down by a yard. It'll be third and one. The defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings, who's been successful everywhere he's been. Yeah, Floyd Peters, uh, who's had just marvelous records in Detroit and San Francisco and St. Louis. Everywhere he's been, his team has led the NFL at one time or another in sacking the quarterback. And he's quite a defensive tackle himself back in the early 60s in the NFL. And look at the difference between 85 and 86 defensively for Minnesota. Great number. Third and one. And Rodgers will have the first down. To the 34-yard line, Walker Lee Ashley makes the stop on George Rogers, who has scored a touchdown, at least one touchdown, in 13 games as a starter in Washington since he left the Saints. And now you can make it 14 games as he scored the first touchdown of the ball game today. But I think of less importance to Joe Gibbs is the fact that he's below four yards per carry. 
And that's an unacceptable figure to Coach Gibbs out of that one back. Coach Gibbs, rather, out of the uh, one back offense. First and ten at the 34. Opening minutes of the third quarter. Schrader up the middle has out. Punk. And Monk is hit immediately at the 39-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be second and five. Scott Studwell and Jesse Solomon. And it's one thing the Vikings have done very well today, and that is tackling. Something that the Redskins were criticized for last week. I know that they keep track of statistics. And last week in the New York Giant game, they felt that Giant runners gained 125 yards after the initial tackle. And if they'd have tackled the way the Vikings are tackling here today, they may have won that ball game on Monday night. Second and five at the 39. 17 to 16, the Vikings lead the Redskins. Go to Rogers. Rogers to the 41-yard line. Shy by three yards, two and a half. Tim Newton making the stop. It'll be third and short. Tim Newton, an up and down year, started the year, went to the bench. The ice box has a sack today for the Vikings. Their only sack. Keep in mind that he was the all-rookie nose guard last year, and not William Perry in Chicago. Tim Newton, outstanding young prospect, and about the same size as the fridge. He's a 300-pounder. Third and two with Kelvin Bryan, number 24, in the lineup for Washington. Grader gets rid of it, and it's almost intercepted by Jesse Solomon. As the Vikings put good pressure on Schrader and Solomon and Studwell were there and Jesse almost picked one off. And Jay Schrader should have never thrown this football. As coming out of the backfield, Kelvin Bryant gets the double coverage. Watch how he's mugged there initially by Studwell, but there's Jesse Solomon right where the football came in. And you almost wonder if one of those guys had the coverage alone if he wouldn't have come away with the football. But that's, that's a pass Jay Schrader should have never thrown. Rufus Fess is back and Steve Cox the boot it, and the Vikings were trying to get a piece of it. Good kick and best with the 15 slowed up and then down at the 19-yard line. Tim Morrison on the play. Timeout following the 42-yard kick. Tommy Kramer's number so far. of Liberty handoff to Darren Nelson and Nelson cuts up field to the 20 gain of only one Neil Okowitz on the stop Okowitz had 10 tackles against the Giants and as Dan mentioned took it personally when people criticize the linebacking core in that defeat well they lost you know two of their best athletes in, in Mel Kaufman and Monty Coleman and, and certainly that's going to have an impact but Neil Okowitz feels that their linebacker play has been fairly solid but any way you want to look at it, the guy they missed the most is Mel Coffin. You're right, and Coleman's coming back next week. Second and eight at the 21. Kramer in and out of the chest of Steve Jordan. So for the second time today, Jordan just dropped a pass right at him. But Jordan has played a key role in the Vikings' comeback from a 10-0 deficit. He caught four passes in the first half for 92 yards, including a big one for 48. He's pretty unhappy, as he should be. That was a good throw from Tommy Kramer. Right on the numbers, right in the chest, and that's just, that's a pass you're not going to see drop from him, and he's put them in a difficult position. Hassan Jones, number 84, is in as a third wide receiver on third and eight on the Vikings' 21. And Kramer hits his man, Alfred Anderson, out of the backfield. It'll be good enough for a Minnesota first down at the 32-yard line. Todd Bowles made the tackle, but not before Anderson and Kramer hooked up for 11. Running the wide receivers deep and releasing both of his backs to their respective sides of the field. Anderson just makes a quick break to the sidelines. It wasn't anticipated very well by Todd Bowles. And consequently, a Minnesota first down. Bowles just a step and a half behind Alfred Anderson. First and ten at the 32-yard line. The cool veteran Tommy Kramer. Who a year ago at this time had eight touchdown passes and eight interceptions. Vastly improved this go-around. And 
Kramer going for Jordan, and Jordan makes the catch against the gambling coffee, and down the sidelines goes Steve Jordan for a Minnesota touchdown. 68 yards. Well, that's one way to make up for a drop pass. Come up with a superlative effort on your own. That time, Steve Jordan making the big play from the tight end position. Nothing fancy. He will make his little break here to the sidelines, but then immediately turn up field after making the catch. And as a defensive back, you've got to know your coverage. Coffee gambled when he didn't have any safety help back to the inside, and that's a mistake a defensive back just can't make. You've got to know where your help is coming from. If you're going to gamble up close, you better have a safety backing you up. And Jordan has averaged 32 yards a reception today. Chuck Nelson with Coleman holding. The kick is good. And it's 24 to 17. It's about as good as you can do it. And that's the third touchdown reception of the year for Jordan as Nelson kicks off to Verdan. At the eight yard line. Verdan with a 20. And Verdan is brought down at the 25 yard line. Once again next Saturday, two important college football battles coming up. It'll be North Carolina and Clemson, both teams in the midst of the fight for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. And then out on the West Coast, we've got a Pac-10 matchup between Stanford and UCLA. Both of those clubs were the six and two record. That gets underway 2.30. Eastern time, 1.30 Central right here on CBS Sports. And there's an injured Viking down. Not sure who it is right now. In the third quarter, first and 10 Redskins on the 25. The up back is the tight end, Warren. Schrader goes the other way and has Clark. Clark gets nearly nine yards on the play. Carl Lee making the stop. And by the way, Kramer has now passed for 300 yards and he went into the game with 18 300 yard passing games which is a Viking record. And he's well on his way to a 400 yard game something that Jay Schrader turned in last week on a Monday night again in a losing effort so the air is being filled with footballs here and around Halloween I don't know if that's got anything to do with it or not. Second and two at the 33. George Rogers fights his way for first down yardage just beyond the 35 yard line. Tim Newton on the stop. Right now the Redskins need two scores to regain the lead in this game. You know this is about the time of a ball game where the Redskins and their superiority in that offensive line often tend to show up but because of the nature of this ball game they really haven't had a chance to do it. Look at the last two games. And that is a total yardage figure, if you can imagine that. 74 yards. First and 10 at the 36 of the Redskins. And Schrader going deep for Art Monk, and Art Monk makes a tremendous catch at the 25. And it's nothing more than one-on-one -on -one with Carl Lee. Lee gives Monk the outside position. He gets his head back to see the football. But again, another perfectly thrown pass from Jay Schrader. And he has been doing that all game long. Dropping in the football just exactly where he wants it to the delight of the Hoggets. <laughs> They're on their feet. <laughs> if they can be. Monk with three catches today. They've got four feet. They have to be on their feet now. <laughs> That's true. First and 10 at the 25. <laughs> He's so technical. Right? <laughs> Schrader on first down. Got it in the air, and it's picked off. The Vikings know, and now they didn't hold on to it. It'll go as an incompletion. Uh, Look how close Jerry Burns saw his Vikings get the ball back. Run your fingers through your hair, Jerry. It's going to be batted at the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be Keith Millard that gets his hands on it. Yes, it is Millard. It goes straight up in the air, and that's Chris Martin who has it come right down in his hands, almost like fair catching a punt, and he's not able to hold on to the football. The Vikings, who have yet to get 
a turnover from the skins had one in their hands and let it slither through second and ten at the Viking 25 Raider up the middle through Art Monk incomplete and it'll be third down and that's just the communication and the working between a receiver and a quarterback. Yeah, do you see the frustration on Art Monk's face? That's because this pass is going to be back behind him. Art, keep in mind, was moving from his right to his left right there, and that ball went behind him, and there's no way that he could stop and come back to get it. And Art Monk, who's, who's gone from a deep threat early in his career, now primarily just being the guy that works the soft zone underneath. Gary Clark has become their deep guy. Art Monk, the motion man, and the guy who seems to be working short most of the time. Third and ten. Later under pressure from Doug Martin. And friends. And the pass to Kelvin Bryant is incomplete. Covering on the play was Rufus Bess and Jesse Solomon. And Doug Martin. And Chris Dolman both put good pressure on Schrader. It'll be fourth down and Max Zendejas comes into the ball game. He made good on a 25-yard field goal and missed one from 51, and I discovered that the cutoff point is about 51 or so for Cox that Zendejas, when he tried out for the team, kicked one from 60. This is a 42-yard attempt Schrader holding. And Zendejas' kick is good. 7-11 to go. Three points for the Redskins brings them back somewhat. 24 to 19. For touchdown, 67 yards to Leo Lewis and 68 to Steve Jordan. Kicking off this Cox. And it goes out of bounds. The worst being they can score from anywhere. All starts with the NFL today at 12.30. Rufus Best receiving the kickoff at the five-yard line is stopped shy of the 30 with... 6.56 on the clock in the third quarter, and Tommy Kramer and the Vikings go to business again. Dean Hamill on the stop. And look at Dexter Manley out on the field. He's, <laughs> he's trying to get the crowd and the Redskin defense fired up. Dexter imploring the crowd. Let's hear it. He scored a touchdown on the fumble recovery and a 26-yard scamper to give the Redskins the lead after they had lost it. on their own 29. Kramer down. Manley again. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Dexter Manley gets blocked all the way down to the ground and when the quarterback has to scramble out he ends up making it. Watch him get blocked by Zimmerman. I mean he's manhandled completely and from his knees he just leans out and gets a sack on Tommy Kramer. Like the fumble recovery, there's no substitute for being in the right place at the right time. Two sacks for Manley. He has eight in the last four games. You know, Gary Zimmerman, the guy across from him, has to be going, you got to be kidding me. I block him like that. Loss of eight. Second down. Kramer hits Leo Lewis. Did he hold on? He did. Shy of a first down by two yards. At the 38-yard line, Barry Wilburn made the stop and 15 yards to Lewis, who earlier today caught a bomb for 67 yards in the Minnesota score. Anybody who might think at this stage of Tommy Kramer's career that he's lost the zip in his arm, the deep sideline pattern is always the one way to find out. And that ball was a rope to Leo Lewis, thrown as well as you can throw. It'll be third down and two. Manley comes out. And the goal line defense, including Marcus Cook, the first pick in the draft by the Redskins, is in there. And a handoff to the second man through. And it's Darren Nelson. Making the tackle was Cook, who came into the game, and the middle linebacker, Neil Okowitz. 
Darren Nelson all by himself caught in the backfield almost turned this into a big play Calvin Daniels gets a hand on him and then Charles Mann almost brings him down a good effort by Nelson but not enough the Vikes have to punt it and Greg Coleman for the fifth time today will kick it away there's Ken Jenkins with 545 remaining in the third quarter the Vikings lead 24 to 19 Kick nearly blocked. But Coleman gets off a fine kick. Jenkins with a fair catch. Has it at the 28-yard line. Manley, who has done it by word and deed today, gotten the crowd involved in this game. Nearly a block here, Dan. I think we've got a flag on the far side of the field. I just spot over there, but you're right. Nearly blocked. But a late flag comes down on the far side of the field. Let's see if we can determine what this is. Quite obviously against Minnesota, or they wouldn't be talking to Russ Grimm. Kicking team, kicking team. Illegal downfield, number 72, decline. I'm going to give him some lozenges. Yeah, that's, uh, I believe David Huffman might have been downfield a little early. Yeah, it was Dave. All right. Old Dave? Is that a, there's old Jerry prowling <laughs> the sidelines. He wants some effort out of his defense right here. First and 10 at the 28. 531 remaining. Redskins in their own territory, trailing by five. That missed extra point. Still hangs heavy in this game. Rogers. Finds a hole and George Rogers. Flag comes down following the tackle by Rogers at the 36-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. John Harris, the free safety, and Chris Martin, the linebacker on the play. Here's Fred Silva again. And that'll be against the Redskins. Offense, number 81. Illegal push in the back above the waist. Ten yards, still first down. Start Monk. So nullify that eight-yard run by Rogers. Old Art, huh? <laughs> Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. That's Art Monk to the left of your screen there in the slot. Coming in from behind. Oh, yeah, clearly he's got the hands out and on the back. That's a no-no. Ten yards. Backs him up. First and 13 on the 25. Schrader. And dropping the pass is Gary Clark. Second drop of the game by number 84. hard to fault Jay Schrader and his passing today. His receivers who all season long have been there for him today have come up with some crucial drops. That certainly doesn't qualify as one of them but I think of the long one by Art Monk and the long one by Gary Clark. They each had one that hurt the Redskins. At one time or another all of them seem to have dropped the pass. Maybe with the exception of Warren. Second and 13. Kelvin Bryant enters the game. by Keith Millard. Schrader back at his goal line. And Schrader cross field completes it to Clark. Still on his feet. And in the Viking territory. And a first down and shaken up is Tim Newton back at the five yard line. There aren't many athletes in the NFL that can stay alive this long. Keith Millard forces. Now watch Newton get it right there from Jeff Bostick. We couldn't pick it up. But a bullet across field by Jay Schrader to Kerry Clark. And look at him stay alive. Boy, sometimes a play like that can spark a football team. You have to figure that Gary Clark is having at least eight or nine, maybe even ten seconds to get open while Jay Schrader buys some time. The wide receiver coach, Charlie Taylor, who was a great one for the Redskins, says Clark is a cross between Drew Pearson and Fred Bolitnikoff, and he showed both of those traits there. First and ten for the Redskins on the Viking 48 with under four minutes remaining in the third quarter. And they go to Didier. And Didier can't get out of the grasp of Joey Browner. To the 44-yard line. There's the clock remaining in the third quarter. 
It'll be second down and five. Jerry Burns Vikings five and three, but know that five of their final eight games, including this one, played on the road. To win a road game would be so crucial to Minnesota's playoff hope. Second and five. Bryant is the one back. Harry, Kelvin Bryant and Joey Browner. With Jesse Solomon stopped them at the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and short. And a Viking shaken up. Is that Newton? I think it's Doug. Offensive lineman, number 63. Also in there. And they give it to George Rogers. And Rogers, close to a first down. I don't think they're going to give it to him on the spot. Jesse Solomon on the tackle. If it's fourth down, and it is fourth down, they won't even measure. Joe Gibbs, with 2.24 to go in the third, has a decision to make here. And they're going to go for it. On fourth, they say fourth and two. It's a short two. When it's fourth down, it's never that short. It, I imagine it looks awful long from where Joe Gibbs is standing. Rogers will have the first down and more. He'll have a touchdown. have we seen redskin running backs take a short yardage situation and turn it into a touchdown I think of John Riggins in the Super Bowl and now it's George Rogers turn here at RFK Max Zendejas as the Redskins have the lead again in a seesaw game 25 to 24 and the kick is good and it's 26 to 24 so for George Rogers a 40 yard touchdown run he now has 12 touchdowns this season and look at the blocking up front as Jeff Bostick, the center, took out two Minnesota Vikings. And with the unanticipated cutback, no Vikings are anywhere close to George Rogers. He takes it in for the score. Ooh, that's what it was on the Minnesota side. We have seen many spectacular plays, Dan, today. Both running plays and passing plays. The kickoff at the 10-yard line. Trying to go outside, and Ken Jenkins and company won't let him. Terry Orr also in on the play. Good special teams coverage. Let's look again at George Rogers' touchdown. The key block, one of them by Joe Jacoby, is going to come over and cut Millard right there. Jeff Bostick, the center, is going to come over and make a hole, and Walker Lee Ashley, the middle linebacker, is going to over-pursue. Watch the hole as it develops. Watch Jacoby to the right. There's the cut on Millard. But 58, Ashley has to stay at home. He goes too far to the left, gets caught in traffic, and there's the natural lane for George Rogers. First and 10 Vikings on their 19-yard line with a minute and 33 to play, third quarter. On the draw, Alfred Anderson gets good yardage and brings it out to the 25. Olkowitz and Coffee on the stop. But Rogers, with two touchdowns today, has 12 rushing touchdowns for the year to lead the National Football League with 12 scores. But keep in mind, the big play was Jay Schrader, who was chased back to his own goal line, throwing cross field, 27 yards of first down to Gary Clark, and the Redskins went from there. And Schrader, I believe, is playing exceptional football today. Both quarterbacks are, Schrader and Kramer as well. Second and four at the 25. Under a minute to play in the third. Darren Nelson runs into a brick wall and loses. And that Redskin crowd, this is where RFK Stadium is one of the toughest places in the league for the opposition to play when they're hemmed in at that end of the field. Daryl Grant made the tackle. 
Well, there are two reasons for that. One, the crowd does make it difficult, especially when you're on offense. Hearing the signals is something that's very hard to do. Of course, these guys in the white shirts have a little something to do with it, too. By and large, they're very sound defensive teams, and this is where they shine. Third and five at the 24. And Kramer going up on top. Leo Lewis is all alone. And Lewis, it's now a foot race to the 20, to the 10. And Leo Lewis is in for the touchdown as he beat Darrell Green to Pater. Darrell Green had one shot at him. It was Vernon Dean covering, but Darrell Green tried to catch up to him. And a touchdown, the second of the ball game for Leo Lewis. And Darrell Green had to come all the way across the field to try to make it. Leo Lewis working in the slot. A blown coverage. Vernon Dean, for some reason, came off of Leo Lewis. And it was Daryl Green who was really man-on-man -man with Anthony Carter that came all the way across the field, but just a little too late. For some reason, Vernon Dean came off of Leo Lewis, and I think Joe Gibbs wants to know why. An angry Joe Gibbs, and Leo Lewis with a 76-yard touchdown reception. 30-26 to 26 Vikings, and Chuck Nelson's kick is good with six seconds remaining in the third quarter. And so Tommy Kramer with two explosive touchdowns today to Leo Lewis, not to mention a 68-yarder to Steve Jordan, and a game of fireworks. Nelson kicking off. Verdang at the goal line. Good speed for Verdan, and Rufus Best wrestles him down at the 28-yard line with no time showing on the clock. And that's the end of the third quarter here at RFK Stadium with the score. The Minnesota Vikings 31, the Washington Redskins 20. Fourth quarter, Dick Stockton and Dan Deardor. First and 10 Redskins on their own 29. Later looking for a receiver, finds Art Monk at the 35. And Jesse Solomon knocked him back. So this is the kind of game, Dan, it looks as if who's going to score last will win this game. Yeah, the running game appears to have been abandoned on both sides of the football as we look at Tommy Kramer and his three-quarter numbers, 456 yards, his best game ever against the Browns in 1980, and that number, 456, certainly in jeopardy right now. If Tommy has any sort of just an average fourth quarter, he'll go on to a personal best. Second down and four at the 35. Melvin Bryant. We'll have a first down for the Redskins at the 40. Good counter move by Bryant. Jesse Solomon and Scott Studwell made the tackle on Bryant, who was the second all-time leading rusher in the USFL behind, of course, Herschel Walker. You see him coming out of the ballgame, uh, upon picking up the first down, and I think he's getting just about as much use today as Joe Gibbs wanted him to have. After being out for six weeks, you've got to be judicious in how much you play a ball player, especially a talent like Kelvin Bryant. They're at the 40. Raider to Clark. And they rule incomplete as Clark trapped the ball. Covering was Isaac Holt. Well, Gary Clark made it awful close. Let's see if we can see ball meet ground. To the upper right of your screen, Gary Clark just patiently waits for it. Oh, yeah, clearly it one hops up into his arm. So a good call that time by the officials. Second down and 10 at the 40. You know, an 80-yard day, which Clark has already, which maybe could be a 150-yard day if he holds on to that one pass from Schrader. You know, he's... That's about as quiet an 80 yards as a guy can have. He's at the bottom of your screen on second and 10, and they're going to go his way. Clark downfield and incomplete. And Willie Teal made a fine play to stay with Clark all the way. Teal lost his starting job this year to Carl Lee. And fine coverage it was by Willie Teal. Stride for stride with Gary Clark. Now, Clark does not have Daryl Green type speed. He does not have Roy Green type speed. Someone who is that world class type of receiver. Willie Teal that time with him stride for stride. Played it as good as a cornerback can play that route. It'll be third and ten. There's Clark who's had a tremendous afternoon. 
could have been better. And one receiver who's been quiet today is Clint Didier, who's caught only two passes. Raider went to Clark, incomplete. And covering again was Teal, and it was deflected. Yeah, somebody got their hands on that football, one of the Minnesota Vikings. Was, was that pass intended for Kelvin Bryant? I believe it might. Let's take a look at it here. Schrader throwing to his left. Who gets the foot? There it is, tipped right at the line of scrimmage. It's tough for me to see exactly who it was that got a hand on that. But nonetheless, because of that deflection, it's a Schrader incompletion. Steve Cox will kick it, and Rufus Bess is back. And the Vikings nearly got a piece of that one. And Bess is just going to let it roll, and it will be down inside the 25-yard line. We have 13-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time remaining, but the Vikings lead 31 to 26. Kramer under pressure. Dave Buck misses him, and the pass is caught by Anderson. First down, Vikings, and dropped at the 39-yard line. And Kramer had to do some quick thinking there as Rich Mallott and Vernon Dean made the tackle, good for 14 yards. Boy, and here we are in the fourth quarter. The Vikings have a 31 to 26 lead. You expect them to run the ball, and yet look at Tommy Kramer, not hesitate to go to the air. He throws like a guy who's had some success today. There's Curtis Jordan, a little bit, overplaying it, and <laughs> Alfred Anderson, a good pickup, a Viking first down. Yeah, there's nothing like uh, having those kind of numbers to make you want to drop back and throw. Tommy goes over the 400 yard mark. First and 10 at the Viking 39. And here's Darren Nelson. And Okowitz slows him up and hangs in there. As Nelson brings it out to the 44-yard line, Ken Coffey also in on the play. The Redskins gave up 318 yards a game in total offense coming into this game. They've given up over 400 last time was against the Cardinals in 84. And that was a game that had playoff implications. The Redskins won that game, went to the playoffs, and the Cardinals did not. And most of that, by the way, was in the second half by Lomax, when it really didn't count all that Second and five, Darren Nelson. Inching closer to first down yardage is stopped at about the 49-yard line. And we may have a measurement. As the clock stops with 11.36 to go, Neil Okowitz and Curtis Jordan in on the stop. But total yardage-wise, the Redskins have given up a lot more than they allowed all season per game. Jerry Burns, who was a head coach at the University of Iowa, learned his trade under some great people. As you can see, it's a... Viking first down and only the second first down rushing of the day for Minnesota. Forrest Evashevsky, the great Iowa coach, was a teacher of Mr. Byrne. But Grant. First down, Minnesota. pass was intended with a penalty marker down for Anthony Carter and the Redskins might have been pushing off flag from the back judge seldom works in favor of the defensive football team and this does go against Washington defensive pass interference number 28 First down. Darrell Green couldn't handle Carter. Yeah, safe to say that he'll be lined up on Anthony Carter. We've seen this all day. We're beyond the five-yard zone, and he makes contact with Anthony Carter. And Carter, not even the intended receiver. It's a penalty Darrell Green could have easily done without. And a 13-yard penalty as a result. So it's first and 10 Vikings at the Redskin 38, leading by five, 31 to 26. Aaron Nelson stopped for a loss by Dave Butts. Who has anchored the run for so many years in the Redskin defensive line at age 36 now. 
When you're going to pull people and go one direction, you better seal off the backside. That time Minnesota didn't do it. And Dave Butts was in their backfield to make the play. A loss of three on the play. Second down and 15 at the 43. Darren Nelson with 17 yards. Has been a leading rusher. And Manley doing with some more cheerleading. Kramer under quick pressure gets it to Jordan. And Jordan gets, breaks the tackle. And fights his way to the 25 and a first down. And if there's something going to make Joe Gibbs angry from last week's game is a continuation of bad tackling that results in another Viking first down. Vernon Dean was the man who missed the tackle. Well, the Redskins are going to blitz Tommy Kramer. See the blitz coming up the middle, and this is nothing more than the adjustment the tight end makes when he reads the blitz. And Vernon Dean has him one-on-one. -on -one. It's single coverage on the blitz. He simply beats him and then runs away from him. And that was a good, solid move by Steve Jordan, the tight end, a veteran, and Tommy Kramer, a veteran. Jordan never had a 100-yard game receiving before this year. He had one against Green Bay late September for 112, and today he's broken the bank to the tune of 178 yards. First and 10 at the Redskins 24. And Alfred Anderson for a couple. Well, that was a blown play. Darren Nelson, the lead back, didn't even block anyone. They weren't quite sure what to do. You saw Tommy Kramer before the play directing traffic, and oftentimes that's what happens. But I think more importantly here, we saw the Redskins gamble come on a blitz, and they were beaten by Kramer and by Jordan. And this is a Minnesota offensive football team that just doesn't seem to be wanting to play a conservative ball game. They've got the lead, and instead of running it, sitting on it, they're still playing wide open football. Second and 10 at the 24, under nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And Ted Brown goes off left tackle, and Curtis Jordan wrestles him down. At the 19-yard line, gain of five on the play. So the Vikings missing the run and the pass. And what's really significant here, as we look at Steve Jordan's number, those, those 178 yards that Dick just talked about, what's important here is that they're in field goal range. And that would give the Vikings 34 points, which means the Redskins would have to get two scores to take the lead. And that's why a, a field goal here, a touchdown isn't even necessary. A field goal forces the skins to score twice. It would give Minnesota an eight-point lead. Third and five at the 19. And movement in the line. Darren Nelson took off before the snap. And if that penalty is indeed against the Vikings, it'll have a third and ten. And when you talk about field goal, of course, that makes it that much tougher for Chuck Nelson. And remember how you were talking about this end of the field, how difficult it is to hear? That's exactly what happened right there. The whole offensive team moved, but the center 51. didn't snap the football. He's calling the right guard for a penalty, but the center didn't snap the football, and that's because they're in the shotgun formation, and he can't hear Tommy Kramer's signals. Jerry Burns roaming up and down the sideline like a wounded lion. It'll be third down and 10 at the 24-yard line. And the Vikings have also used a good chunk of the clock this series. And you have to credit the Redskin crowd for being the key factor in that penalty against Minnesota. It'll be third and 10. I guess that won't make them be quiet on this play then. No. Kramer to Leo Lewis and a penalty marker down. Barry Wilburn was covering on the play and he may be called for a foul. And did you see what happened there? Tommy Kramer, because of the crowd noise, went under center. They didn't run that play out of the shotgun. So the familiar fade, which has worked so well for the Redskins in past years, works for the Vikings here and it'll be an automatic first and goal for the Minnesota Vikings. Defense, number 45, pass interference. Ball on the one-yard line, on it, first it. down. Now someone asking for a replay from the sidelines. Let's see if we can pick it up. This will be in the lower left-hand corner of our screen. Leo Lewis diving for the football. Boy, very difficult to tell from that angle. It is. Whether or not there was contact. i got to be honest with you. I can't, I can't tell from there. Ted Brown in the backfield with Darren Nelson. First and goal at the one. And it's 
Ted Brown. No signal yet. Only by Tommy Kramer. And he didn't make it. So it'll be second down. You make the decision. Our camera's right on the goal line. Teddy Brown, it looks like his helmet was across the goal line, but not the ball. Not the ball. Awfully close, though. Yeah, awfully close. <laughs> close is right. It'll be second down. That may not necessarily hurt the Vikings with the clock continuing to run, provided they get in. Alfred Anderson is back there now with Nelson. And they're going to throw to Darren Nelson for the touchdown. And the Minnesota Vikings, who are hoping for three to make things tough for the Redskins, have scored six here to make it really difficult for the Washington Redskins. I think it's safe to say that Washington was anticipating the run as no one played pass defense at all. Tommy Kramer could have taken his choice of one or two receivers, either Malarkey or Darren Nelson. He chose Nelson, and that time the skin seriously overplaying the run. Do we get a smile from Jerry? Do we get one? No maybe, chance. Maybe in 653 from now. <laughs> Who knows? Coleman will hold, and Chuck Nelson will attempt the conversion, and the kick is good. And it's 38 to 26 in favor of the Vikings, and four touchdown passes today for Tommy Kramer. Tommy Kramer has thrown four touchdown passes for the seventh time in his career. I want to remind you that following this game, 60 minutes will come your way. Chuck Nelson kicks off, and it goes out of bounds. And we'll have to do it again from the 30, and that's like the third time. Jets won a tough road game. Smothered and has to be down there at the 30-yard line by Keith Griffin. A review of today's important games in the NFC East. The big one, of course. The Giants beat the Dallas Cowboys 17 to 14. In the other NFC East battle, the Cardinals beat the Philadelphia Eagles 13 to 10. The standings right now, the Giants have the lead. And if the Redskins can't come back, the Redskins and the Cowboys will be in a tie for second place. And next week, it all continues to heat up. The NFL today at 1230. And then the second game of the doubleheader will be the Giants against the Philadelphia Eagles. First and 10 at the 35, Ricky Sanders, number 46, checks in as a wide receiver. But this is Kelvin Bryant and Rufus Bess. Helps to bring him down right there at the 36, Tim Newton as well. Keep in mind what we had talked about in the beginning and the NFC East. It's the kind of a division race that has not been really decided until the next to last week of the year. Of course, the drama continues next week again. The doubleheader game on CBS will be the Giants and the Eagles. Second and nine at the 36. Redskins need huge chunks of yardage in a hurry. They go to Didier, who makes the catch. The quiet man today. Only his third catch. That good for 30 yards with Harrison Teal on the stop and a first and 10 at the 34 of Minnesota. And the Skins trying to get downfield offensively as quickly as they can. This simply a straightaway fly pattern by Clint Didier as the goalpost there obstructs our view, but he had to go up high for the football, brought it down. But still, keep in mind, they need two touchdowns to take the lead or one touchdown and two field goals. On the 34, Slater gets time. He's going for Art Monk. He's got it. Touchdown, Redskins. It took him only a minute and 37 seconds for Jay Schrader to hit Didier for 30 and this pass to Art Monk for a touchdown. He's at the bottom of our screen. Let's keep our eye on him. He'll go out of our picture for just a moment, but there's the catch. 
Art Monk working back to the inside against Lucas Best gets the touchdown catch. Zendejas. And the conversion is no good. It's off to the right. So Zendejas has missed one and has had one blocked. And the score now is 38 to 32. And the Redskins still need a touchdown, just as they did before that conversion. So that was not a critical miss, really. Well, the only where it's critical, Dick, is that two touchdowns by Washington now would only tie the ball game rather than give them a win. If he'd have made that extra point, two field goals would have won the game for them. As we look again at Art Monk making the catch, that was just another well-thrown ball by Jay Schrader. But Zendejas misses the extra point. And it's ironic that all these years the Redskins had one of the best in Mark Mosley, and now they're struggling in this area. Nothing more than a push to the right side. He doesn't follow through with that right-footed delivery and a clear miss to the right side for Max Zendejas. In this business, in the NFL, you don't last long if you don't make extra points. And he knows it. But nonetheless, how about Jay Schrader? It didn't take him very long to get down the field there, Dick. Minute and a half, three <laughs> plays, 65 yards, and he can do that. Another good point. Cox. Line drive kickoff. Rufus Bess on the five-yard line to the 20. Driven back. Verdam misses. Walton misses. Bess still going. And he brings it out to the 24. And it could have been much better from the Redson, Redskins point of view as Dexter Manley dances onto the field. Well, Dexter thinks we may have a fight going. He can't stand the thought of one taking place and him not being <laughs> in the middle of it. So <laughs> you're great. He doesn't want to get cut. What do you say, Dexter? Fire him up. Well, now, Dan, the question with 5.03 to go is whether Dexter drew that picture himself. <laughs> You know, he might have. I'm losing my head, sorry. <laughs> the Vikings have 50 yards rushing. Do they try to control the ball on the ground? They haven't been successful, or maybe go to the air. Throw the football. Remember their last drive? That's what they did. At the 24. Darren Nelson gets a yard, and it was Charles Mann on the play. The Denver Broncos beat the Raiders 21 to 10, and a big win for Denver now 8 and 1 on the year as the Raiders drop to 5 and 4. Seattle losing to the Jets also 5 and 4. Things look good for the Broncos. And that brought the Raiders in their five game winning streak to an abrupt halt. Remember, they got off to that 0 and 3 start and then won five in a row. And Denver served notice who's in control of the AFC West. 4.25 remaining in the fourth quarter, second and nine with the 25. Kramer goes down. Darrell Green, and that's the fourth sack of the game for Washington. And now they got to separate some people. Well, Dexter Manley gets right in Tommy Kramer's face. If he was waiting for Tommy to take a swing, I think he had a long wait, although Tommy Kramer, a feisty quarterback, you know, he doesn't, he's not afraid to talk to some of the defensive linemen. He doesn't take it lying down, so to speak. But Daryl Grant, pretty well blocked on the play, comes up with a play, and Tommy Kramer may have had something to say. Anyway, look at it, he made Manly mad. Might have thrown the ball at him. Third and 15, back at the 19. Big play, and the fans know it. Incomplete for Darren Nelson and covering was Angelo Snipes. Well, depending upon whose ox is being gored, three and out, bad for Minnesota, the best thing in the world for the Skins. And Greg Coleman will kick Ken Jenkins. Could give the Redskins solid field position with 3.42 on the clock now. And a good kick by Coleman and Jenkins. 
after 36. Brings it to the 46-yard line. Make it the 45. Good field position, a 10-yard return. Chris Dolman on the stop. We've got time to throw some short passes. Just don't do something foolish. First and 10 at the Redskin 46-yard line. 3.31 on the clock. Raiders pass. And the pass, is it intercepted? It is by the Vikings' Carl Lee. A big interception for Carl Lee. His second of the season. And the first turnover by the Redskins today. And the Redskin offensive team not wanting to leave the field as we take a look at it. Carl Lee working on Didier. He comes off Didier to go over and get in front of Art Monk. The ball hits the ground. He didn't have that interception. That ball went through his hands and hit the ground. Well, I've got to wonder why the people in the replay... Well, they may be taking a look. I think that's what's that's going exactly on. That's exactly it, and it's going to go against the Vikings. It's got to. Here it is again. There's no question. Watch the football go through Carl Lee's arms and hit the ground. He dives for it. You're going to hear a roar. Ground. That football, that was not an interception, folks. You're going to hear a roar from this crowd. Well, I'm sure they're taking a look at this on the replay, and they have to overrule it. But the fans don't know that. They don't know how much that pass was not intercepted. And you'll hear the roar. The people who have televisions in the crowd have already cheered. They know the result of this call. Well, we're having, they're chanting replay. <laughs> well, they're getting one. Well, I tell you what, I don't know why it's taking so long to figure that one out now. That was going to bite my tongue. Well, don't do that. We've got to hear you for the next 324. <laughs> well, that's... The Redskins called a timeout, and I think that was part of it. Here's the crowd. The players have already shown what the reversal is. Then you'll get the announcement from Fred Silva. Maybe. I mean, I don't know what's taking so long. There's no question that it was not a catch by Carl Lee. Maybe they're waiting for us to make the call. And now we understand no timeout was called by the Redskins. Here's Silva. You'll hear it all. Well, you certainly can't argue with the call. It was an incomplete pass. Jerry Burns is inquiring of the official to that sideline what happened. Jerry Burns, his reaction. Well, Jerry, when you see the films, he'll, you'll find out they were right. <laughs> It'll be second and 10 at the 47. And the Redskins still alive when it looked like their last hope was down the drain on the interception. But the replay proved otherwise. The ball is at the Redskins 46. Close games are nothing new to the Redskins this season. Five games have gone down to the last couple of plays before the verdict was decided. And this shapes up as another one. Three twenty-four on the clock. Raider with time. Up the middle, and Lucas Bess nearly picks it off. It was intended for Gary Clark, and Bess was in great position to intercept the pass. Well, it would have been another diving attempt at an interception by a Minnesota player, Rufus Bess, this time. It's a crossing pattern, and he anticipates it perfectly. But the ball again is underthrown, and that's twice in a row that Schrader has severely underthrown a pass. Carl Lee, now Rufus Best. Both get their hands on a Schrader pass and can't bring it in. You know, you don't get that many chances. Third and 10 at the 46. Schrader on third down. Incomplete. Gary Clark again, and that bounced in front of him. And now it's fourth down 
with 3.13 to go, and Cox will come in. And this wasn't close. It's not often you see holding this good and not get a call. Watch the right tackle on the right side of your screen. That's Mark May. Let's see if we can get this. He's going to just drag this guy to the ground right there, and we don't get a holding call. Boy, that's, uh, that had the Minnesota bench in an uproar. So it's fourth down, and Cox will be kicking. Bess is back. The Redskins did call a timeout, but because it was overruled, as far as the replay was concerned, they were not charged with one. So the Redskins still have three timeouts, plus the advantage of the two-minute warning. 38-32, to 32, the Vikings lead the Redskins. And the game going down the wire. Good high kick and a fair catch by Bess at the 12. 3-0-4. 43-yard punt by Steve Cox. That's a smart play by Best. Here, maybe the biggest play in the game coming up now. Nelson is stopped at the 15. It'll be fourth down. Todd Bowles coming up from the secondary. Well, now the Redskins have to be thinking of good field position and Jay Schrader's ability to get big chunks of yards in a hurry and using the sidelines. That play never had a chance. The Skins sensing run had a safety blitz, a run blitz at the line of scrimmage, and that play went nowhere fast. Holman will kick from inside his five and Ken Jenkins will be back for the Redskins. Good kick by Coleman. Jenkins at the 42. Gets into Viking territory where he's down. At the 47 by Walker Lee Ashley. And our two-minute warning is upon us. And the Redskins need a touchdown, and they are at the Viking 46. 10 at the Viking 46. They're out of timeouts, and they need a touchdown. Nothing less will do. the conversion I might add. They've missed two of those. Schrader on first down being chased by Keith Millar and he's gone deep. Didier! It's a catch at the two. Didier catches it at the two-yard line. And that official wasn't sure what call to make because Didier was awful close to trapping the football. 44-yard gain, here it is. Because of Schrader's scramble, Didier is all alone. Did he catch it? It can't be seen from there, but the official was there, and he says yes. And it's first and goal for the Redskins with 1.21 to go. A big play by Clint Didier. From the other angle, did he get it? <laughs> it hit his forearms. It hit his forearms rather than the field. If he kept it off the ground, it looked like a catch. It's the kind of a play, Dan, that only that official had a good shot at. Close enough to make it interesting. 121 remaining, and Didier's catch his fourth of the game. From behind Jay Schrader as he scrambles to buy time the second time today that he's thrown it like this after a big scramble. And does this guy have a cannon? And Dan, they're checking the replay upstairs. And the field it's, judge... Boy, it's close. The field judge is over on the Redskin bench. And you can see several Redskins around him, including, of course, Dexter Manley. Where else would he be? On the phone is the field judge. The thing to keep in mind is that the official on the scene ruled it a catch. So, in other words, they're going to have to see something in the replay the to overrule. If it's an inconclusive replay... They won't overrule the game official. And judging from what we saw, there is nothing in the replay that would overrule the official. But let's wait. Here he comes. An instant replay, a play stand. First down. And that's the way it has to be. First and goal, Redskins at the two. Some of the jargon we're all getting used to is the term inconclusive. And when the official on the scene ruled it a catch, that's their only choice. The Redskins need seven. George Rogers gets 
six. The third touchdown of the game for George Rogers, and the biggest one to tie the game. But Zendejas, who has missed two, will try the conversion to try to give the Redskins the lead. It's blocked. It's blocked. Rufus Bess, I believe, blocked the kick, and the score remains tied at 38. How can you figure this game? I can't. If you're Jerry Burns, it's the best thing in the world that can happen to you. Three times today, Max and Dejas had chances for conversions. He missed one, two were blocked, he made the others, and the Redskins missed a golden up. Kicks it off, and it'll go out of bounds. For next week, and the Giants in Philadelphia will be the second half of the NFL doubleheader on CBS. End over end, and a chance for a good run back by Rufus Bess at the 15. Hit once, gets away, and Bess goes out of bounds. Got away from Alvin Walton, and Bess brings it out to Son Jones. And Leo Lewis out to the right. Carter split left. First and 10 at the 28. Under a minute to go, and they're going for the downs on this play. And Barry Wilburn was the closest defender with a chance to get the ball. Hassan Jones was the receiver, and Kramer just threw everyone. Out through everyone. And it's second and ten with 52 seconds to go. Now a second down call. And a penalty. Let's see if a penalty marker's been thrown. It has been. Here's Silva. Offense, number 65, holding. First down, 10 yards. Gary holding. Zimmerman, the left tackle. So they'll mark off 10 yards. And he was locked up one-on-one -on -one with Dexter Manley. So Dexter that time did his job. He drew the holding penalty. Minnesota has not been penalized much today. The Redskins been amongst the leaders. First and 20, back at the 18. 52 seconds. Pass to Darren Nelson is caught. Nelson gets away. And Nelson fights his way to the 37. Ken Coffey makes the tackle. 43 seconds to go, and now a timeout is called by the Vikings. They're first of three. That was a gain of 19. And quite an effort that time by Darren Nelson. A simple pass. He's just going to flare out from the left side. We'll see him come into our picture right there. And Tommy hits him with a football, but the important Sari breaks two Redskin tacklers. A pair of them had him wrapped up before number 48, rather, Kenny Coffey comes in to make the play. But now what's important for Minnesota is they've got to get a first down. They have second and one. 43 seconds to go. And two. The Vikings need about 30 yards for a 50-yard field goal attempt. Penalty marker down, and the pass is intercepted. It was intended for Nelson, and Todd Bowles picked it off, but there was a flag down, and it'll be against the Vikings. The Redskins still have another answer to go. Second interception of the year for the rookie Offense, Todd Bowles. Number 66, holding, decline, first down. Terry Taus, the right guard. Well, two mistakes on one play by Minnesota. Tommy Kramer, he elects to go to the far sideline, but just a poorly thrown pass, anticipated properly that time by Bowles. And the first interception of the game by Kramer today. First and 10 on the Viking 44. The pass to Clark to the 39-yard line. Side by about four and a half yards. Cara Lee and Jesse Solomon on the stop. The Redskins are out of timeouts. And they're trying to get into position so that Max and Dejas, who has been a GOAT, maybe can be a hero before this game is over. Second and five. Millar chasing Schrader. In trouble. 
And his pass is picked off. Rufus Best intercepts with two seconds. Three wide receivers to the left. A Hail Mary pass. Looking for a flag is all. And the pass was caught. But that'll be it. It was caught by Hassan Jones. But he was down. A 46-yard play. Fred Silva flips the coin. Looks like never told, nor our audience. Uh, not a very good job there, Freddie. Nelson kicking off, and Verdan at the five-yard line. Brings it back for the Redskins. And Verdan, penalty, penalty marker down. Let's see if there's a face mask involved. First and 10 at the 37 for the Redskins. Kelvin Bryan is in the backfield. 38-38 to score. First team that scores wins. Schrader to Didier. And Didier is wrestled down by Joey Browner. The face mask. It's a... Second and five at the 42. If there's no score after 15 minutes of action, it goes into the books as a tie. Schrader over the middle. Art Monk in the Viking territory. And holding on, Jesse Solomon brings him down. Another first down at the 44. At the Viking 43. And there's Kelvin Bryant inside the 40. And there's Zendejas, who is two for three. He missed the long field goal, but notice the two for five and conversions. He's got to be feeling some pressure. Yeah, the confidence factor has got to be mighty low for Max Zendejas. But you know, one thing about being in Philadelphia where Kevin Butler had the terrible day, but you know, he made the one in overtime and all is forgiven. Second and five at the 38 for Schrader. The game is over. Gary Clark the Redskins win the game 44 to 38 let's look at it from the end zone it's a missed tackle Carl Lee isn't there to make the hit Gary Clark outruns John Harris the game is won by Gary Clark and the Redskins Single coverage against Carl Lee. He comes up and he just doesn't have much of an effort at all. And with the good second effort on his own, good speed, Gary Clark again does it for the Redskins. And the Washington Redskins move into a first place tie with the New York Giants in the NFC East with identical records of 7-2. and two. And for Jerry Burns in the Minnesota Vikings, overtime. Jay Schrader, who has pulled a rabbit out of the hat so many times today, does it one last time to Gary Clark. We've seen a lot of comeback wins by the Redskins here at home, but this will be one of them that they'll talk about for quite some time. Gary Clark, the hero. A missed tackle, working the sidelines, and the Redskins stay tied with the Giants. Some game. So for Dan Deerdorf, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from RFK Stadium. The final score, the Redskins 44, the Vikings 38. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.